coding made easy. What's up everybody and welcome to a Ask Peter video and this question comes from Nicola and he wants to know how to practice thinking the object oriented programming way and uh, I could what I'm gonna start off is this the, the first thing is the first word in object oriented programming is object and it's a concept which a lot of beginners often avoid or often forget the word object is very important to object oriented programming the purpose of object oriented programming is to make things design classes or things that are based off of real world objects and then based on those three those real world objects we can combine them to make one one cool thing for example my my office setup right I like my desk setup or whatever my mini office whatever you want to call it it contains a mic I have a laptop I have a TV for my computer screen I have a PS3 and so on and so forth and all these objects together form an office each of them individually is its own individual item but together they make an office does that make sense so uh for example you yeah that that's just that that's a pretty decent example i guess sorry so that is in a sense what object oriented programming is so a lot of people sometimes have trouble they're like what classes do i know how to make uh, do I make a class for this? Do I not make a class for that? Well, if it represents a real-world object or it represents an object of some sort, then uh, if a class is need, then then a class may or may not be needed. Now, in order to practice the concept of object-oriented programming, the the task of creating an object or creating a class for an object that is the easy part. The hard part comes when it comes to the hierarchy of things, when it comes to inheriting from one class and this class is inheriting from the other and using polymorphism, that's the part which gets hard and this is how you practice it. Now uh, what I would do is take obvious things um, like for example, let's say for example um, I have a car class and then I have a Porsche class and a Lamborghini class. Now, we would want the Porsche and the Lamborghini class to inherit from the car class. Now, why would we want to do that? The reason why we want to do that is because we using the is keyword is, is a very powerful thing in object-oriented program, in object-oriented programming. This is what you always want to do when you're when it comes to practicing objects or when creating objects or creating classes. So I have a car class, a Lamborghini class, and a and a, and a Porsche class. Okay. So let's see this. Is a car a Porsche? Is a car a Lamborghini? Yes, it is possible that a car can be a Porsche. It's possible that a car can be a Lamborghini, but it isn't a hundred percent definite that a car is a Porsche or Lamborghini. So therefore. The car class could not inherit from the Lamborghini or the Porsche class because it is not one of the others. Now, let's look at it this way. A Porsche is a car and a Lamborghini is a car. Now, does that not sound more, let's say, politically correct? A Porsche is a car and a Lamborghini is a car. So therefore, since a Lamborghini is a car, that means it has properties that a car would have. And therefore, we would inherit from a car. And that's what you do. You do minuscule programs like that, just miniature programs that do something like that. You have a car class that has a, a engine method, something, whatever, and you can inherit from that. And those little things will help you dev understand how inheritance and how polymorphism works and understand help you understand the importance of it if we look at it for um as another example let's say we have a shape class and we have a rectangle and we have a circle and we have a hectagon or something a shape is not a hectagon a shape is not a square but a square is a shape 
a hectagon is a shape. A circle is a shape. So what does that mean? That means that you would have to inherit from uh, the circle, hectagon, and rectangle classes would have to inherit from the shape class because they all have a property of a shape, right? If that makes sense. So you inherit from something that you all share similar similar properties of and i know it's it's kind of not maybe not as detailed as you like it but basically this is how you look at it when you're programming you look at it as uh, as real world objects you look at everything as a real world object right and um what you do is you try to base something that is off something else so you take the little parts you take the little parts and you inherit from the broader spectrum if that makes any sense so um one last example will be something like this let's let's look at the exact um the the things it takes to build let's look at uh my uh, a playstation playstation 3 for example right there's many components that make up uh PlayStation 3, there's um, there's computer chips, there's CD ports, there's whatever, there's a bunch of things, LED lights, a bunch of different things that make up this whole huge object. And this whole huge object is a PS3. But the PS3 has a few components in it. For example, it has computer components in it. So in order to make up that ps3 or something we would inherit from the computer class because it contains a computer a ps3 is a computer but a computer isn't necessarily a ps3 if that makes sense so we take from the bigger spectrum right we take that we take that the ps3 is a computer and we inherit the properties of a computer and we implant it into a ps3 so a computer has um uh has uh whatever a motherboard for example so we'll get the motherboard properties we'll have all the chips we'll have all that stuff and we'll inherit it we'll inherit from it and those are little things that we'll inherit. So we'll inherit one thing from the computer class. You might inherit something from another class to make the outer frame of the PS3 or whatever. And when you combine these things, you combine these things, these little, these uh, semi-objects, and you combine them into one thing and they make up this huge object, which is the PS3. And that's essentially how object-oriented programming is. So if you use a shape example again, um, uh, not all shapes are the same, all shapes are different, but shapes, a lot of shapes have similar properties, such as the area of a certain shape, such as the perimeter, such as whatever. So they have similar properties, and if you want to other sub properties or subclasses of it to inherit those properties then that's where object oriented programming comes into place so the high the hierarchy of object oriented programming can be very complicated but in order to practice it what you do is you take little real world things just little things that you've seen throughout your life just take objects in your own house take whatever and just make classes on them in order to build them just take um, anything, anything you see, whatever you think it takes to build upon them, you make different um, subclasses and join them into one to make the whole object, and therefore that's how you get object-oriented programming. So I hope that assisted you out, I hope it assists anybody else out. If something was kind of vague and you want, need me to explain it more, then feel free to comment in the comment section below. So thanks for watching this, hope you enjoyed it, and bye for now.